Hey everyone, Attic here and today we are comparing the new DJI RC with the RC N1 to see which option will be the best for you. Okay, the obvious difference here is that screen. It's a 700 nit screen which is plenty bright for most situations and is very clear and crisp. But with the RC N1, you have to connect your phone or tablet to see what you're recording. There are several benefits to each depending on what your needs are, mainly that you need an SD card in the RC if you want to record the screen and that maps and firmware will have to be updated using a Wi-Fi connection whereas on the RC N1 all of that is handled by your phone or tablet so it's not an issue. On the RC N1 you have a combined photo and video button and depending on which mode you have selected that's what you get. On the RC however there are dedicated buttons for each. If you recall my top 10 video, this was one of the things I was really looking forward to. And although it is good to have, you still have to hold either button to switch between modes first uh, before you take the shot, which isn't as good as I'd hoped. I find myself mostly shooting video and then suddenly a nice shot pops up and I want to capture a photo quick, but it's a bit cumbersome. I thought that was the whole point of having the dedicated buttons, but oh well. This is a nice to have and can be very useful if you use the zoom feature, but as the zoom is digital, I generally stay away from it. I wish they would allow us to customize it and choose something else like rotating the gimbal, which would give us the ability to take shots like this. This was edited for this effect, but this would open up a whole lot of creative shot options. This is also a great addition to the RC, having two buttons which you can customize to your liking, as well as combining the right jog wheel for more options, but more on that in a bit. Currently you're able to configure either one of the two C buttons on the back of the RC to recenter or tilt the gimbal, to switch between follow and FPV mode, hyperlapse cruise control, lock auto exposure, increase or decrease exposure, access camera settings, or switch between the portrait and landscape orientation of the gimbal. You can also have two more custom configurations by using either C button with the right dial, choosing any of the above options. Talking of the right dial, I was pleasantly surprised to see that you can also customize that to do either zoom in out, which is the default setting, or to adjust focal length, exposure, shutter speed, or ISO. This is a great addition, but as I said before, I would love to have the option to rotate the gimbal slowly while filming. Nothing much to talk about here except uh, I find that the RC sticks feel a little sharper than the RC N1s, which is not a big deal at all, but ever so slightly uncomfortable nonetheless. Uh, also the uh, sticks feel like they move a lot quicker, so if you're coming from an RC N1, be a little cautious on your first flight and gauge for yourself if there is a difference. Both remotes are very similar in size, but obviously due to having the built-in screen, the RC is slightly larger. Bear in mind that with the device attached to the top, the RC M1 may end up actually being taller than the RC with the screen. By no means is bulky or cumbersome, and I actually find it very comfortable to hold for, hold for long periods. The RC M1 has a stated battery life of around 6 hours when not charging a mobile device, and around 4 hours when charging. Comparing this to the RC, which has around 4 hours stated battery life, which works out to be similar as this has already got a built-in screen. Uh, now, since I've had this, and while I had my Mini 2 with the RC N1, I have never felt like the remote battery wasn't enough. I have the Fly More kit for the Mini 3 and I also had it for the Mini 2, so I always had 3 batteries. I mean, even with 3 batteries, the stated flight time for the Mini 3 Pro would be 1 hour and 42 minutes. So effectively you could burn through 6 batteries with still just under half an hour of battery left to play. Which is more than plenty in my book. And like I said, I have been very happy with these AI's RC batteries so far. Both these remotes are fairly comfortable to hold, but I think I prefer the RC as it's slightly wider at the bottom, meaning my hands are in more of a natural position. Both devices' button configurations are very well thought out, and I do have to say though that uh, I don't miss fiddling with the cable to connect my phone to the RC N1. Okay, so this has been a major point of discussion 
on the interweb recently. So let me start by saying that the stated distance for signal is 12 kilometers or just over seven miles for both remotes. It's the tech in the drone that allows that, which is OcuSync 3. Now, theoretically, they should both be the same, but there are many people saying that the RC isn't performing as well as the RCEN1. Personally, I've had some issues when I first started flying with the RC suddenly dropping bars then reconnecting etc but I have not seen any issues with range for how I f how far I fly. It may have been something they fixed in an update or maybe I was just one of the lucky ones. Either way let me know in the comments if you're still finding range to be an issue. Another point of discussion has been that the RC doesn't have any access to any other apps or software except for the DJI Fly app and settings, even though it has Android built in. This, this can be easily rectified by DJI, but I suspect that the chip used inside isn't too powerful and they don't want people to bog down the system with intensive apps and have a bad user experience. I hope I'm wrong because I haven't been able to find out which chip they use, so if any of you know, let me know below. Of, of course, this isn't a problem at all with the RCN1 as the screen is your personal mobile device which would normally have access to all your social media apps as well as a data connection to upload whatever you wish. And lastly, the screen recording on the new RC is abysmal. It only records in 5, 540p and until a few days ago it was an even worse 480p. Although this 540p is a step in the right direction, this is still well below HD and is half of full HD which is 1080p. I really don't understand why DJI would hold it back. I mean, if you're going to spend time updating the resolution, why not just do it properly? Even 720p would have been usable in most scenarios, but this just seems petty. For the RCN1, that's a non-issue because it all depends on your personal mobile device. So if your personal device has a screen of 1080p, then it will record at 1080p or even higher in most cases nowadays. So that concludes my comparison between the two remotes for the Mini 3 Pro. I hope you found this information helpful and if you did, I would really appreciate a like. And if you would like to follow my journey, please consider subscribing. Till next time, stay safe, stay creative.